Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Avant Novus live stream. I'm da Dan with Avant Novus. Today, this is the first tutorial of two well, where we will be dry, drawing a realistic fantasy map using ArtRage 5. Uh, just a couple things before that. would like to uh, thank our sponsor really quick, ArtRage. Um, they're currently promoting and sponsoring this stream. would like to thank them very much. Right now, you can actually go online and let me just show this really quick. You can pick up Art Rage 5 for $47. Usually it's $80, but it's on sale. Also, all their other products are on sale as well. I'd highly recommend you take this opportunity and go pick this up. In addition, we'd like to thank miniwargaming.com. Uh, these are our good friends, they've helped us a lot. Um, big shout out to Matt and Dave. If you go on miniwargaming.com, if you're looking for tutorials, how to paint, how to play, and also a lot of free content, you'll find that at miniwargaming.com. We also have two of our maps, big map packs that are on sale there. You grab a vault membership and you can get those for free. Another fun, exciting thing here is also at DriveThruRPG, our maps are now on sale. And I will post a link in the chat. Hope everybody enjoys that. These are five bucks a piece. For five bucks, you get pretty much four different styled 36 inch by 24 inch campaign maps for you to use for whatever you want. It also comes with an atlas and all kinds of other stuff. And again, I will put that in the description. Um, today, in general, we are going to be doing a from start to finish, well, first part of this, we're go I'm going to be showing how we here at Avant Novus draw these fantasy maps. We're going to start with preparing our tools, we're going to start preparing our color swatches, and we're also going to be preparing, I'll show you how we get that started, how to prepare the canvas. We'll also start making the landforms. We're going to take some time, usually we do these in about one and out, you know, a map in an hour, but we we've got a really, a lot of a request to go slow, show you guys the process. I would like to also give a big shout out to our good friends, Lucas. He's been sticking with us since the beginning and Lucas, this one's for you, sir. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. Right here, we are our basic campaign. This is our basic setup. So let me know how things, if you guys can hear and all that stuff. Yeah, this is our live stream. We don't edit these. All right, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is this is the basic layout of Art Rage when you get into it. Okay, you start it up, and I'm actually going to close these so you see fully what it is. We have our display area, and this is where, of course, we do all the artsy fartsy stuff. Our next is we have a stickers. Over here we have stencils. We won't be covering those today. Our settings, these are our brush settings, and we will be covering this. Also, we'll be covering our presets of what they do and how to find them. Our layer maps, our layers, our tracing, that's how we do all these, and our reference images, if we have any. And also, we're gonna go and how to make samples and other stuff like that. So, to start out today, we are going to, first of all, I'm going to create actually a new map. And let me, before I do that, let me show you this. This is, following this process, this is the kind of map you can make with ArtRage 5. Okay, this is one of our maps. This is called Venus. It's actually based on the old, uh, old satellite images of Venus. 
But as you can see, with this map, you can see every little hill, valley, crevice, island, tree formation, clump, forest. And I'm going to show you exactly how to make a map look just like this. Okay. To do that, we're first of all going to hit New Painting. I'm going to go over to Print Size because I find this, usually our maps are about that big by that big. Today, though, we're going to do a width of 11 inches, height of 8.5 inches. Uh, pixels per inch is 450. Again, to get to that menu, you just hit New, New Painting, and dial everything in there. Now, this 450, this pixel uh, pixels per inch, that's the secret of how you get such high detail. The higher that is, the more resolution you can get from ArtRage, and the more um, the more details you can put into the map. All the settings I'm going to show you, all the little menu items, are based on this number right here. Okay, If you have it higher or lower, the settings I'm going to show you will be a little wonky. So if you're following along or do this on your own, try 450. It really doesn't take that much. It's not that beefy. All right. Let's go ahead and get started here with our canvas. To get our canvas properties, we can either go up to Tool and hit Canvas Selection. However, clicking off the map, you right click on the map, and if you go down to Canvas Setting right there, or hit sh Control Shift C, that's going to bring up your canvas settings. Again, right click on the map, right click on the design area, scroll down to Canvas Settings, Control Shift C. Okay, and this is going to pretty much make our uh, canvas presets. Now, Art Rage has a very cool options for your canvas. You can actually, you see here where it says grain and pattern, you can actually choose what kind of canvas you'd like to work on. Okay, for this, if I'd like to change what canvas, let's go select from collection. And these are all the collections that come with Art Rage. Yeah, you have like canvas grain, coarse canvas stuff, a bunch of other stuff like that. Uh, coarse paper, hatch canvas, some decorated stuff, papers, lumpy paper, which is my favorite, uh, crumpled, which is also good, huge crumpled, and other stuff like that. So if I was doing an uh, image with crumpled paper, I just select that and hit OK. And again, the way you do that is you go to your canvas settings, Control Shift C. Control -Shift -C select your grain. Now, right now we're not going to see that, but if I, let's say we put on, if I put something down, you can see already that I have a canvas image. Okay. Now, let's say I didn't like that canvas and I want to change it. Let's say we want to go with, I don't know, let's brick wall. I just click that and lo and behold, we have a brick wall shining through. Okay, so that's how you do canvas settings. Play with that, have fun with it. You can also make them more bold. You can make them sh show through through transparency with the metallic. Opacity will just, you know, show it to you wherever it is. Uh, for this painting, we're actually going to go to canvases, actually to favorites, and we're just going to go to fine paper and hit OK. Again, can, uh, Control Shift C, grain, fine paper. Now, we're actually not going to be using the canvas. Will you come back to the canvas later? But we're going to turn the opacity of the canvas down to zero. This is going to let us see anything in back that puts, pretty much makes the background transparent. Also, to help with our map, and we'll come back to this, this is important to note, we're actually going to change the canvas color. Okay, so we're going to go with a dark green. The reason for that is we're going to be using an eraser and also some other tools like a knife brush. And what that does is it actually cuts into the canvas. Here, I'll show you on this one if it's transparency. Like I come with a eraser, it erases and I get this canvas color underneath that. We're going to use that to blend some of the different... Uh, some of the different features and some of the different textures of this. So now, okay, so we've covered our canvas and how to set that up and our settings for that. This right here is our layer panel. 
and that's pretty self-explanatory. If you're new to working with any type of software, this is going to allow you to, to add, stack, and combine different elements and different layers on top of each other. We'll come back to this a little bit later as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we are actually going to, and we're just going to get right into this, we're going to choose our ink pen down in the bottom left corner here. Now this ink pen, we're going to draw the outline of our maps. And to do that, we're going to first start on, this is our brush preset right here. Sorry, let me show you exactly where that is. Down here it says presets, and these are all the presets that come with ArtRage. Uh, there's also some that users have create, created. ArtRage also offers. You can just grab them at ArtRage.com. Really awesome. Okay, we're going to start with this anti-aliasing uh, brush. Okay, and let me put this right over here. So what that does is when we create a line, zoom in really close on that, it creates a very kind of ragged, we get really close, and again, we're looking at thousands of, you know, we're really zoomed in here. That's going to create our line that we want for our map itself. Now, there's a, I want to tweak the settings on this as well, so, and add one more feature to this note, anti-aliasing brush, so go to settings, and we're not going to have it smooth. We want things to be craggy, and we want them exactly, exactly how we draw them for this portion of the map. Again, to do this in review, presets, choose your preset, in this case, this brush, go to the settings, Oh, too many button pushes. No. Okay, here's my settings with the brush, and I'm turning the smoothing down. Now, what I can do, I can actually save this pre uh, preset to save time on my next map. However, I'm not going to do that because I want to show you guys how I do everything. Now, down in this corner also, right here, we'll even do a little line there. Um, this allows me to control how big my brush is. That's 100% with this brush at 450 DPI. We can go up to 500% size, which is gigantic. And we can go down to one or 2%. And that is based on how many pixels you have in a square inch. All right. The next step of this is we are gonna go ahead and set for the start of this. We're going to click on our ink pen. We have our preset. Yep, we're, we're doing good. Our settings, just double checking. Yep, we're good. And we're going to set this to about 8%. Okay. And that's going to give us a pretty thick line. You know, let's even make that a little smaller. 4%. That's good. That's great. And we want this line to show up quite a bit. So we're going to go full black over in this bottom, uh, bottom right corner. This is our color picker. You can choose a bunch of different color pickers. I prefer this one. And we're gonna choose our black here. And again, grab it, put it all the way down. And we are gonna start with our campaign lines. Well, where our map lines are. And I'm just gonna willy-nilly this. If you're on the live stream, I'd like to welcome you. I see a bunch of people. Let me know what kind of map you want and we'll just do it. So let's go ahead and kind of make a zoom in here there we go let's just make kind of a general purpose map and we're just going to start drawing now if you want to fast forward to a little farther on this is going to take a little bit of a while you'll get the idea it's really quick exactly what I'm doing. I'm very conscientious about the form of my maps. And again, a lot of practice to get it to this point and a lot of just random tinkering and exploring. One of the greatest assets I've ever had in my life oh my is... God. One of my greatest uh, greatest references actually off of Google Earth. 
And I just like to go in there, look at maps. Sometimes I'll take screenshots and trace over them. Haven't done it with this one. I'm just making this kind of randomly, kind of how I feel. You get kind of a feel how the coastlines work. And yes, this is live, so anything you hear, you are going to, <laughs> anything going along here at the apartment, also known as our office, you're going to hear live. Let's go ahead and make another, maybe make kind of a metro, Mediterranean feel to this. Again, how I'm drawing this, I'm just going for it. I'm not doing any straight lines, but in the smooth areas, I just kind of go for it. Let's put some islands off this. Maybe, uh, maybe a big old island off the coast. It's just kind of formed willy-nilly. Let's say, oh, uh, let's say I kind of want to connect these. I don't think I want a, maybe we'll kind of do something that's reminiscent of Europe. The large peninsula right here. Thank you for coming. We're, we're being joined by yet more people on YouTube. We are live on YouTube, Twitch, and also on Facebook at this moment. Come drop by, say hi. And again, any of these maps we do, we um, these are available on all those channels. They are here for your reference. We'll keep them up on YouTube. YouTube and Twitch actually have very high definition streams. Let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm not too worried right now about the blockiness of these. You see how it kind of looks very pixelated? Totally not worried about that right now. The reason for that is we're going to come in and we are going to add some more detail. We'll also come in and clean those up a little bit as well a little later. And let, let's make a giant island here. This is kind of maybe, maybe a volcano or something. Volcanoes are cool. And add a lot of dramatic. Maybe not. A, you know what? What if this was an ancient cone of some type? Cinder cone that blew its top a long time ago. Of course, I don't know if I like that. Eh, I don't like that. Going to go to my eraser tool right here, turn it up to about 100%, and just click here and go for it. I am using my mouse and also a really um, Wacom stylus. It's just a little stylus. I got about seven years ago to do all this. I just have kind of a dramatic little island. You can do pretty much whatever you want. And, you know, maybe I want something a little more awesome down here. On our YouTube video, I will try to put some timestamps. That way, if you're just looking for the technique itself, it'll just zip forward for you. Yes, we do all our maps in our age because our age offers something that no other program offers and we'll get to that here in a few minutes and we are just full disclosure we all are being promoted and sponsored by our age they featured us on their websites and also on uh, their posts on Facebook and social media and we cannot be more grateful for their kindness towards us they found us they approached us they helped us define our look and feel of all these maps and we are extremely grateful for all their help and for their support 
It's been a wonderful mentoring tool with Art Rage. They've been absolutely divine to work with. All right, we kind of got a cool little map thing going here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. We're gonna islands are very important to maps. We're just gonna make some little ancient islands across the coast here. I mean, this area right up here is like fjords. Our two basic features of Art Rage we're going to use is how intuitive, well, it's it's very intuitive. It creates a dynamic painting that like talks to you. Done a lot of oil paintings and digital paintings. And Art Rage really, really, really helps you create a natural workflow. It's kind of cheese y but it definitely talks to you. All right. That's not a bad place to start. Let's go ahead and our next step, we've gone with our little uh, ink tool pen. We're now going to fill in all these areas with this black paint. Okay, And the art bucket on Art Rage works a little bit different than any other like paint buckets or art buckets or whatever you call it, they call it. First of all, down on this bottom left, we click on our art bucket. We're going to go to presets. Now the presets are a little different with our paint bucket. We have two choices, a basic spread fill and a gap protected fill. Hmm, gee, I wonder what that could be. If we go to our, into our settings, this comes up with our gap protected fill and we want the opacity to be 100%. However, we want the spread to be down about 11%. We want to make sure our anti anti a-list edge is off and our gap tolerance is about 10 pixels okay what this is going to do if you've ever worked with any digital picture and used the paint bucket if you have little holes in your map in the outline it will just bleed through and make a giant mess our age has a gap protection that will fix that and again, this is done in your presets and you can fine tune it in your settings. And again, spread 10%, gap about 10 pixels. Now, our rage is going to think, and based on those, I screwed up there, whoops. It allows you to, it will analyze these and you won't have to go back for hours looking for that one itsy bitsy little crack that you messed up and you can't find. It's very intuitive, quick, control. All right. See on this island right here? See that large hole? <gasps> it's filled, yay! try that on anything else <laughs> that one was an even better example oops wrong place dopey me that's also one of the uh, reasons we choose to do a live stream is to show you how if you've made mistakes and heaven knows I'm gonna make a lot more than that it's gonna show you how you get back out of that how you fix things and how you undo your little mistakes however mistakes also can be very very cool little little happy mistakes there we go all right next thing we're going to do is we're just going to have a look at the outside of these layers and if we find anything that looks too flat we're going to select our eraser brush right here it's again a little eraser we're going to put the pressure up to 100 softness to zero and we're going to shrink this down to about let's say eight percent and anytime like right here we have these these kind of flat lines we're just going to go in and mix it up a little bit 
the key with painting any type of map is your preparation. Again, I'm going in and finding any of these very... And these just come across from your tablet how you draw. And all it takes is just a little poke of an eraser to create a nice edge. I totally forgot that there we go. If you kept on smoothing, it would take care of this for you. However, I like to have as much control over the shape and form of my land that is healthy for someone. <laughs> but you'll see the results. And I'm just going around in any really flat places. Just, you know, just putting a debit, debit, divot in it. You, you'll, you guys will have to excuse me. I do have a really nasty cold, so I'm on a little bit of Nyquil. <laughs> so you, you'll hear some sniffs, and I ask for your forgiveness on that. Okay, it's so not that bad there. Got one over here. Now the interesting thing, if you go on satellite images of the Earth, you will find, they're very rare, but you will find them straight edges. Really awesome things like that. We got here. We are on Facebook. Yep, we are on Facebook. We're also on YouTube and on Twitch. So if you joined us from any of those, welcome, 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 welcome. We are so excited to have you. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or pleas for mercy, please go ahead and put them in the chat. And I am actually pretty good about answering those. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've kind of completed the basic form of our map. And we're about a half hour in. All right. So what we're going to do next is we're going to start utilizing some of Art Rage's uh, unique features. Okay. Now, I'm going to open up another layer here and close this layer. And let me kind of show you what I'm talking about. This tool down here, it is called our Paint Tube. Okay. And our Paint Tube is mainly from, if we're working with like oil paints, it's actually based on modeled and the physics behind it is from uh, an oil paint tube and what I'm usually how you'd use this if I was down in let's say we're you know doing something let's go ahead and just put a blob of color right there maybe we'll get a blob of color right there and what it's doing what Art Rage is doing is actually and if we zoom in is applying not only the pigment not only the you know that digital pixelization but it's also keeping track of how much paint is on that certain area so if i go in with an oil brush tool i can actually start mixing just like and it really feels like an oil it really feels like oops i need to that's why that did that You can mix these together and just kind of make your own painting, your own colors and stuff like that. Okay. Now, and again, if I were to put down like, I don't know, a, let's close these so you can really see if I was going into watercolors. You'd actually get, okay, so that's a really big watercolor. It would actually behave as a watercolor interacting with oils. And it's a very natural way to do paintings. Again, the key here is that it adds mass to the painting, and our RH keeps track of it. Another little fun thing is this is our glitter brush, and we're going to totally misuse that brush here in a few seconds. Okay, so using this, and also Art Rage is in real time creating. This is my knife, knife brush. 
where we can like combine colors and get instant gradients and all kinds of fabulous stuff there. We're going to be using the layering of mass, the texturing of mass to create our paintings. Okay, let's go ahead and just get rid of that layer. To do this, we're going to open up the layer that we just did. We're going to lock our transparency. It's very important to lock your transparency at this point. Okay, since our transparency is now locked, we go in and we choose our giant tube of paint down in the bottom left of this. And we're going to increase the size to 500%. So that's 500% of 450 pixels per square inch. I'll let you guys do the math. And we are going to start just adding mass onto, onto, this, onto this painting. To do this, I'm just going to use a gray. And I'm also using my mouse at this point. The reason for that is I want this mass of paint to be very much on the consistent of what I've added. Now you can you can see you've got the mass of paint. It simulates exactly how a paint uh, a tube of oil paint works. Then we're back down here. back down here and what we're doing right now is we're preparing the bottom of most layer of our painting we're getting it ready to receive additional texture additional mass of paint color and everything else so this is probably one of our most important aspects of this paint uh, of the how we paint um, in addition to that I'm also following kind of the rough contours of this landform that we've created and again, using the mouse, so I have a consistent and even amount of paint everywhere. On some of these, though, I am starting off the canvas. Because if I just blop on the canvas and leave off, you get these kind of cool little mountain things. We technically don't want that but they're really cool if they're there anyway so all right not bad let's go and make sure we get these islands and again the way you do this is to make sure your layer is locked and just splatter paint all over it okay so we've got a good we've got a good amount of paint here but we want more oh yes we want more to do that we are now going to texture we're going to you see all these lines and stuff kind of don't want that so we're going to go go in and fix those and smooth those out how we smooth those out is this uh this tool right here is called our palette knife let's go ahead and click that okay and our palette knife is just like a scalpel slash uh trowel or anything else you'd like in rh let's go, our, go to our presets now now you're going to notice i do have some ones i already have preset but I'm not going to use any of those. I'm actually going to show you the ones that come with ArtRage. So the one, first one we're going to do, this is a harsh chaos. And I'm going to, just for this demonstration, unlock this layer and show you what this trowel does. It basically cuts into a large image of paint and kind of in a star pattern, grabs the paint and distributes it as such. Okay. That's really cool. If we lock this down, we can actually start, you can see the kind of detail levels and texture we're getting. And that just so happens to be almost exactly like how natural mountains and hills form. Okay. You can also customize the heck out of this. Again, I'm only using settings found in ArtRage themselves. Itself. Okay, size on this, I'm going to kick it up to about 250. 250 is also going to be a magic number with the 450 pixels per square inch. And with my pen, I am just going to lightly make rounded. We're just rounding off these lines that the tube of paint left. Now we don't want to go too crazy with this because if we get too close to the edge, you can see it already dragging into the edge and bringing out the green of the canvas. That means we are cutting deep into the material 
into that mass of paint that we just applied. And we want to be very careful not to do that too much. But we still want to get the majority of these little wrinkles and texture out. We're looking for a semi-flat. If there's like little divots and stuff, that's cool. That's natural. That adds so much to our paintings. Again, same thing up here. All right, now that we've reached this point, we're just going to zoom in. You can always see the detail level created, and this is the key. We're actually just pushing paints from point A to point B with Art Rage. Now that we've kind of got our kind of got our base done here, we're going to start adding additional paint to that. That paint, we also want to be coloring a little bit. So let's go ahead and to our samples. And we're going to select a series of samples that are paint samples here. That's going to help us create this. Now, if you go into samples, just right down here, and hit add sample, it will add the color that is currently active down in your uh, color, a uh, little color selector. Okay, that's going to be important. We'll use that a lot. However, there's this little menu button right up here. And once you click it, click it, it's going to say add samples, replace samples, whole bunch of other things. Okay. What we're going to do is add to collection. Oops, my bad. Let's go ahead and clear these off, my bad. Okay, click on here, add samples. And that's the third one down. And it's going to say load from disk, select from collection. We're going to be hitting select from collection again, samples, menu, two down, or excuse me, three down that says add samples and select from collection. And this brings up a huge menu and a variety of samples from our rage. Okay. So you have your basic, your favorites, samples, basic landscapes, and still like portraits, samples, colors, you know, all these different colors. I do have my own personal preset colors right here. Warm colors, basic colors, grays, hues, still lifes. These are fun. Uh, fr the uh, fruits <laughs> for maps. This one's a really good one, but let me show you what I like to use. If we go into landscape, it's going to give us a gigantic amount of options like autumn, beach, city at night, sunset beach, etc., like that. What I'm going to use, I'm going to use our beach. These always, I've had really good experiences with these colors. I'm going to hit OK, and it populates all my colors consistently. All these colors blend together well. There's really no, you know, clashing or colors that draw too much attention. I'm actually also going to add another section of colors. Again, if we hit our menu right here, we go down to to add samples and hit select from collection. The next one I'm going to choose is, you know, looking through this, is our Desert Oasis. Again, this one, I played around with this, and this blends very good with our samples. So now we have a colors that color palette that we're going to work with. Okay, since we've selected those, all I have to do is just click on one, and you'll see it automatically populate our color picker. Now, what I'd like to do is go with kind of a darker, let's, let's go with this guy, this color right here. And we are going to actually be going back to our, we're gonna actually add some more mass to this painting using this specific color. To do that, just click on this, click what tool we're gonna to use. In this case, it's gonna be the glitter, but we're gonna add metallic paint into this. Let me give you kind of a demonstration on what that does. If let's say I was using just an oil paint, okay, you'll notice that I'm actually jamming that into this. And it's blending, of course. I'm getting kind of a cool little effect with that. Now, if I add more metallic paint into this, you can see that it, just like metallic, reflects light and really picks up the highlights and textures of this paint. 
we're going to be using this metallic color to help reinforce our to help reinforce our and help our details and textures pop. For this tool, we're going to go to 250. Again, we're going to click the glitter tool. Uh, we always joke that glitters was the uh, herpes of arts and crafts, and here I am using it. Some small karmic retribution that I'm totally fine with. Now, this our presets again. Glitter tool presets that brings up. We have broken hole punches, a bunch of other stuff, and just like anything else, we're going to go to easy dirt. We're going to bump this up to about uh, 250. Again, that's that magic number. Uh, we're also going to put our metallic to about 20. See that? Again, demonstration. This is no metallic paint. This is metallic paint about 20. This is metallic paint at 100. Uh, you can see the difference there. So we want a lot, but we don't want it too shiny. So we're just going to go to 200. And now we're going to take this. Maybe we need a different color. We want kind of a neutral color, but not too light, not too dark. Someone's screaming for me to just pick one. I'm going to actually make and come down to this gray. Maybe lighten it up a little. That's great. And add a sample. So we've actually added our own little bit. And for this part, I'm going to use my pen. And I'm just going to make little circles all through the map. And we're actually adding this rough glitter. And let's zoom in so you can see that. I'm just adding dirt from the Art Rage preset. See? Blah, 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 blah. Also, the nice thing about Art Rage, if you get it for like your iPad Pro or iPad or anything else, it behaves just like this. You can use it has all the same settings, it has all the same tools. I know there's a little bit reduced. I don't. I'm not 100% sure, but you can check it out at rh.com. There's a demo. There's also Art Rage Lite. And all right, light, uh, it's a good place to start. But honestly, right now with the sales going on with the Art Rage, you want to just jump in and grab it. It is, it is very inexpensive. And at its regular price, I can't stress how good it is. But now's the time to buy it. Okay, so we've added dirt. And you can see we're already getting some really kind of cool textures. And if I leave my, leave my cursor and just put it down I'm, I'm kind of just adding more mass to it see that and don't go too nuts keep your pressure let's see where's our pressure at our pressure is at 100 glitter size is 39 but we kind of want a fine just fine dirt if we're up our pressure size we get you know big old dirt and yes we will be doing this a little bit later but we just want to keep the default settings. And all I'm doing again, circle, 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 circle with the glitter. And let me know how my voice is. Let me know if it's too soft, too quiet. And there we go. Okay. Let's go up here. We're almost done. And at this point, I'd like to kind of review exactly what we've done so far. catch up so we start out with our anti alias pen we make sure that the smoothing is off we make sure we're working with a layer that's unlocked we first of all draw our form of earth I'm doing this really fast then we go to our fill pen we clip click on that gap protection fill spread down about right there about 20% Gap tolerance to 10 pixels. Make sure our anti-alias edge is off. We then lock the layer once it's filled in. We grab our gigantic tube of oil paint. 
it's not black. <laughs> and we just cover this. We then go in with our harsh chaos knife, blend it together. Then we go and click choose our easy dirt tool and fill that in so it's nice and smooth. And just add an ass to it. Alright, that's the process and steps we've gone through for at this point. What we're going to do now is we're going to plan, we're going to take some time to plan out our map by using another layer. I've hit another layer, and I'm just going to draw this directly on, maybe with a red, we'll just select that, go up like that. We're going to now choose where, using a kind of geology and meteorology, on where everything goes and what it's doing. First of all, uh, this is going to be north, this is going to be south. We got to decide what hemisphere this is in. Let's just go North American, or North European, Northern Asian. So south is going to be warm, north is going to be cool. And our wind is going to, as wind does, go into this kind of rotation. Now this is very important because this is going to determine where our deserts are and how our climates are going to be affected. I'm trying, I'm just, you know, just hand doing these. All right, so we kind of got general airflow right there. The next thing we're going to do is get a rough idea on our continents where we want our mountains. Okay, to do that, I just, you know, grab the, just grab a pen, come in with another just random color for mountains. Let's just go with kind of a, yeah, that's good. And we're gonna put some mountains here, we're gonna put some mountains up here, maybe some here, maybe some there, maybe some down here, bunch down here. Okay, that's not bad, that's not bad. We're gonna start with the mountains, because mountains are gonna determine a lot of where our rivers are, okay? And again, we're just planning stuff out if we don't like how it looks, it's so much easier to fix it right here than fix this in another map. Okay, these little circular things, we'll get back into this. We're also going to remember that since we have airflow, like right here, we're going to get, let's see if we're planning out forests. Let's go with just this green. We're going to get a forest here because the airflow is coming in here. Some forest down here because this, this airflow is going to pull moisture from this, slam it up against this mountain, drop a rain shadow. Over here, it's going to be kind of dry, but here we're going to have a little bit of moisture. Here, yeah, we're gonna maybe a jungle here or something. Another thing of trees here. Everything else down there is just kind of dry and deserty. This one, we're gonna have you know the winds coming up from this area. Forest here, not so much up here. Maybe a forest up there. Down here, same thing. Okay, so we kind of got our got our basic areas kind of planned out. Now the last thing I'm going to do is figure out, let's say this is going to be warm area. This is going to be temperate. And this one up here is going to be a little bit colder. So we basically got a very rough idea of how things are going to behave. To do Now let's, to, as a reference, I'm going to drop the opacity of this to about 20%. So it kind of gives us kind of an image of where we want stuff. And this is just basic planning out. What we're going to do now is we're going to start adding the gigantic mass of texture that is our mountains. We're going to go back to our glitter brush down here, click the glitter brush, and we're actually going to make our own brush here. We're going to start with our sparse squares, but we want we don't want these to be sparse. So down here, it's going to show you what it looks like. I'm going to zip the pressure all the way to 100%. Can already see they're pretty big and we're going to also make the glitter size 100 percent we're going to reduce the size of this down to 25 percent of the 420 450 dpi and then when it's time to do mountains that is the kind of line we're going to get but let's go ahead and select a let's go ahead and select kind of a dark brown for our mountains this way it'll show up quite a bit, maybe a lighter brown. That's a good color right there. The lighter brown, it's going to allow us, maybe even, let's do, uh, wishy-washy. 
so wishy-washy on colors right now. Which is not good because you just want me to get to the point. And I get that. Well, let's just make our own. We'll start with the brown, come down into the dark area, make sure we're at 20% metallic. Click on Add Samples. That's not bad. We'll go with that. Okay, what I'm going to do is, using Google Earth, mountains kind of form. You have a, a primary peak, a primary rift of mountains. These are going to be our biggest mountains. These are going to be the very peaks. Sometimes they form in a big scraggly line. If you're looking at something like the Rockies or the Appalachians. Sometimes if you're like looking in uh, Northwest Canada, you've got some really cool mountains there that kind of form. And it almost looks like islands of mountains. Okay. And again, these are our biggest peaks. Once we're done with these, we're gonna come in with a smaller glitter brush and form all the little offshoots and stuff like this. This is also where our tectonic plates are smashing into each other. And again, using our planned out stuff, just kind of making it interesting. I'm, I'm just throwing mountains down just like that. Coming up here, same thing. Again, we're making our, this is kind of the spine of the mountains, the, the great ridges of the mountains. The form is practiced. Jump on uh, Google Earth. Take a look at mountains. Take a screenshot, get a pen out, and just follow the crest of the mountains. And then do whatever you feel is right. Now we got our mounds done. Again, this map we're taking our time with. This is not one of our one, uh, maps in one hour. But this is one of our actual full tutorials. So we're going to go from start to finish with these maps. Now the reason we start with the spine is we're going to be adding a little more mass to these. And let's come down here. And I'm going to zoom out to show you how I do this. There's some ways to do natural maps with like uh, Photoshop and GIMP and like Corel and stuff like that. They use different alpha layers and different textures and you kind of go in and edit those. This I find a lot more natural and a lot to me a lot more living picture than anything else. And we're coming down up down here. And we're here. There we go. And it all doesn't have to be one line, it can be two. And now I'm gonna make a call on where our biggest mountains are. And they're gonna be up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a corresponding ridge. They're kind of the same size. And it's going to be coming to the top and bottom of this one. Just kind of following this ridge. Again, this step is if I were adding some gigantic mountains like Alps or Himalayas or Andes or stuff like that. Not too shabby, not too shabby. Looking. Then we're going to have, maybe this one just has a big one too. Maybe this one has like a, there we go. And there. Let's go down and make another one right here. Good luck for the rain trying to get over these, I'll tell you that much. We're going to have a jungle and then a gigantic rain shadow. There we go. There we go. How's that, folks? That looks good. All right, we've got our big baselines of our mountains done. We're now going to go in, and we're going to reduce this down to the size of our glitter brush by to 10% of the 425 DPI. 
And we're going to make our peaks by just continuing to put pressure on these mountains and then coming down and making our little offshoots of mountains off these. And again, zip down over to just download uh, Google Maps. Something I really like to do with Google Maps is actually take the colors and swatches off of it. But for this experiment, we're actually using the pre-built ones. And these can be as big or small. Go nuts with these. Don't, don't be afraid to make them really gigantic or really small. Just go nuts. I like doing them big because we are actually one of the... I don't like to say actually a lot. We're going to be using a technique to actually carve these out. Got one heck of a drinking game. Of course, it'll probably kill you. Take a shot every time I say actually. So please don't do that. We need you around. Okay, we'll do our big mountains first. And I'm going to make little mountain fingers coming down here. Just kind of sprawling out from our big mountain lines. Giant valleys. You can also think of what you want to put there with your campaign maps. Like I'm thinking, you know, some really deep, dark forests. Maybe this is where the woodland critters, the really nasty ones, live in between these mountains that don't receive much sunlight. And we're just going to carry on doing this for a little bit. Crazy ones come down, down all the way like that. Then we're gonna come up here and just may, maybe do some just little hills and stuff. Now the hills in these maps, we are going to we're gonna add some here and there, but we're we're gonna really use our textures to define where those are. When we carve out these mounds, it's also going to provide us really good places to do some uh, to do some uh, plateaus and other things like that. Let's come come around to our big jungle and desert area down here. And we want to do all the fingers coming down here, just totally blocking any moisture coming into this area. Maybe some great underground rivers that flow down here. Again, same thing up here. Not too shabby. I'm actually really liking this one. This is a good one. Okay, let's come down to this one now. I gotta, I gotta, these little offshoots are very important. If you don't do these, it's not gonna look right. Again, my opinion. Do what you want. We're down here doing the same thing. Hey everybody, welcome to the stream. We are just doing a full tutorial on making maps. You can find these maps at YouTube. Just look up Avant Novus. We're gonna come here. One thing I like really like about Art Rage is I'm just holding down one mouse button to use it. Don't have to zoom in and out. Just click and glide, click and glide. Navigation's really easy. All right, maybe some little more erosions. Okay, let's have a look at that. Okay, got a couple more to do. This map and this tutorial is going to be focusing on getting the basic texture of our maps using our age. The next one's going to be uh, focused on coloring, defining like where the rivers are, defining erosion lines, and everything like that. But for this one, we are just going to work on texturing. I'll make sure the title on YouTube really does a good job in telling you exactly what we're doing here. 
All right. We got a northern desert forming right there. That's fun. Maybe just a couple down here. Maybe this, this has kind of this echoing of hills all through this area. That'd be cool. Let's do that. Maybe they're all echoing up here and we kind of have this like great bases in the United States or the big Mongolian deserts. There we go. I'm going to add some more of these hills because I'm really digging them. Right, right there, just a little bit. Maybe this is really hilly too down in this desert. And again, you see, very natural. You just put stuff where you want. Okay, cool. I'm going to get rid of this reference for now. And we're going to... This is what we've accomplished in about an hour. And we're going to continue on for another maybe half hour. So we got all this nice little plains and stuff. The next thing we're going to do is kind of figure out where water's been flowing. Okay? To do this, we're going to be pushing with an eraser and just very, well, semi-gently, semi-hard, we're going to put in some... Uh, flow lines to help us kind of figure out where stuff is. To do this, we're going to select our soft eraser tool, put it, keep it at 50%, and we're going to up the pressure to about 70, maybe 80%. Let's see that. Yeah, that's perfect. All right. Again, that's just the eraser tool. You click the soft eraser and take care of that. We're first going to start where we know there's a lot of rain. So I lied. Here's our reference. Where our jungles are, this is going to be our biggest rain area, and we want this is just kind of a, to add more definition to the mountains, adding more higher places and lower places. These are not rivers, but some of these might be where rivers go. This is just kind of the form of the land. Let's get rid of this reference really quick. And what I'm doing, I'm making high spots and lower spots to give the map a little more form, a little more dimension, and a little more variables. We're going to start at 50%, and we're going to start in these really wet spots. We're going to put these guys in. See, just really easy. Got a little bit of a can canvas poking through there. here. Now usually erosion lines form as what I'm doing. They start at the mountain, they go down the scene, and any of these branches usually forks off from highest to lowest. However, since we're texturizing stuff, we can go in reverse to make things a little bit more interesting. Only about one in, I think it's about one in 20 rivers or tributaries of a river uh, bisect the opposite way. So keeping that in mind, we really want to make sure that we're getting a realistic texture in some of these. And right now I am just strictly focusing on the mountains with my soft eraser. I'm leaving the settings up so you can copy them or see them. Your call. The key to this is playing around. Now, all these settings only will work if you're at a 450 DPI. And you're also going to have to change this based on how you draw, what you want to draw, and anything like that. That's really easy. Just customize it. And again, Starting at the top, all our little tributaries are flowing downhill. If you mess up, just control Z the crap out of it. As Bob Ross said, you know, beat the devil out of your brush. Yeah, we're going to beat the devil out of control Z. There we go. Now, in these areas that aren't flowing down to the sea, I still kind of want to imagine, if we're hitting just some, 
we're going to get little texturings like this. Just something fun. Kind of hinting at what's around the corner. And we're just going to continue this process. If you'd like to move on to it, I will try and figure out how the notation system works on YouTube. See, we're just happily just taking our time with this. No rush. I'm just going to focus on these tributaries from the mountains first, and then we'll get to the other stuff. By, you know, I want to keep this video rather short. Once we get this done, we'll do the texturing of all this. And then we will go and... I don't think we're going to do rivers today. I think we're just going to focus on our texturing. Take this very slow and easy. We'll come back probably tomorrow the day after. And focus on... Putting rivers and stuff in. And again, I'm hitting I'm hitting the these little land shapes and where erosion might take place by the mountains. I want to keep my design and my image consistent. And right in these hills, I'm actually going around them. Here, let's turn off this reference and I'll show you. Yeah, we're down in these hills. And I'm just going around them because I'm going to use them as a reference on where some of this erosion would be. Again, this is just showing where sediment has been deposited, where it's taken up a lot more, you know, where it's moved the earth. Where the wind and the rain has changed stuff and again we're focusing right on these mountains by the coast first and then we'll go inland and i'll show you how to do inland usually when a area of a map um, when a erosion line goes splits like that there's usually either a very hard material or a certain landform that is making it so that the river has to split in two to get around it. It's it's not quite it's not it's not technically rare. It doesn't happen often, but it's when it does, it happens in like really wet areas like Pacific Northwest, uh, parts of China. It happens a ton. Or if there's a lot of uh, mountain area that receives a lot of precipitation. You'll see that a lot. It creates really kind of crazy conditions. Just finish these right here. All right, coming down here. Bust these out now. Since this is dry, I'm not going to put so many of these. The drier it gets in areas, you kind of want to kind of want to play with the land very gently with these erosion lines. Now it might not seem like I'm doing big ones. Uh, doing a lot, but I'm actually going to be using a smaller brush to do some more of these. Make sure we get the islands. Missing islands is my Achilles heel. Coming back here. We're in here. Just finishing up these. This is again the land, the height and depth of the land, not the rivers. All right, so we've gotten all those. 
So let's now come up into this area. We're going to make our main large erosion line. We're going to start up here in the corner. This is like a great divide or like the big crescent found in northern the northern US between like Utah, Idaho and Wyoming. And I just do one line and then I start pulling these erosion lines down into that one big line. Since we did some hills and stuff like that, I'm using those as a reference on where stuff should be. Again, I'm bisecting, starting at the mountains, moving down, not the other way around. I'm gonna come in and hit these. And the more time we take prepping this, the better our image is gonna be when we start carving. And we're going to be carving through all those different layers of paint we put on the map using the default tools that our rage came with. Now we're getting kind of into a divide down on this peninsula. It's kind of acting like Spain, the breakup between France and Spain, which is really kind of neat. Spain's also a really good place if you want examples of um, of things that bisect like that. Go to Spain. And up here, we're gonna make another little divide. We're gonna hint at it. Yeah, maps have a lot of flat places, but generally it's either up or down or at a certain angle, unless you're living in the plains. And I'll show you how to do those in the next video. Well, maybe this one too. We're just going to take our time. we got about 15, 20 minutes left of this tutorial. And leave in the comments if you'd like to see a map, how I'm doing on this. We thrive off of uh, healthy criticism and critiques. We do read all the comments on these videos. We try to respond to most of them. If you're being snippy or you've got, you know, we like opinions. However, we don't talk to the trolls. See? Got some really good erosion lines there. Next, let's say this is going to be plains. We're just going to kind of make this meandering erosion break right there. Not many of them. All right. So we zoom out, and this is kind of what we've made. Let's go ahead and add the other fine details to this. We're going to drop this from 50 to about 15. And where it's really wet, let's bring up our guide. We're going to focus on creating smaller tributaries into our mountain areas like this. This is reflecting that there's a lot of sediment being moved. Again, this isn't this isn't necessarily where our rivers are going to be. They will be in these areas. However, this is just the way the land flows. And if you'll notice, I'm pulling on these ridges. You kind of got these cool little shapes. I'm pulling these smaller tributaries into the middle of those shapes. Because those shapes are going to be our high points and are also going to be our mountains. If you're close to a mountain, just like right here that I just did, get in there and make sure those images come from the mountain because we definitely want to show how the land has moved, how it's been eroded. Same thing down here. You don't need much of these, just where it's wet, just where we're going to put forests and where there's a lot of water. Because we want the texture of the earth to show exactly you know, we look at it, we want it to, the form and the shape of it to help us identify exactly what's there. 
and how it's affected by the local earth around it. And again, I'm just gently using the brush, using my stylus to just cut into these shapes down here. Shapes that are created by those er erosion lines and also come in from the mountains. Same thing here. Same thing here. Same thing up here. And again, I can always go back and I can always make more of these. They're just little squigglies. Little tiny earth squigglies all over the place. See that? Hi, welcome to the stream. My name is Dan, and today we're doing a tutorial on how to make giant maps that look like this one. With all this crazy, 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 crazy detail. Thanks for coming in. You have missed a lot. However, we'll put the video on YouTube, our YouTube channel. Just jump on YouTube and look all about Novus up. Pretty self-explanatory. Right now we're adding little details to where a lot of rain is falling. A lot of places where there is erosion. We're going from big de details to small details. We're creating, the, we're creating the elevation of where things go. Where earth has been pulled down or where there's been natural erosion that's happened. We're kind of uh, forming the natural, the natural texture of the earth, where the wind and rain and gravity has moved rocks and stone. Really quite poetic if you think about it. All right. Now down here, actually, we're going to have a large jungly area. Now that I'm looking at the wind flow there, that we planned out. And again, full disclosure, since we have a lot of new people in the stream right now, we are uh, supported and promoted by Outrage. They are a sponsor. They reached out to us, liked what we did. However, with that aside, I do recommend Outrage for natural painting or for pretty much any type of painting because it simulates real life painting. You can go from Outrage into a realistic technique using arts or, or using oil paints or acrylics. You develop the movement, you develop your technique in art rage and then move to something real and you can be busting stuff like this out and you're not spending hundreds of dollars on paint canvases. The form of compensation is basically there's a link in the description if you click that you go buy our rage and they give us a, they give us a little bit of a proceeds for that. That's all. Little scraggly things here. I'm kind of keeping these little scraggly markers near the coast, especially when we're in like plain areas because that's where there's going to be moisture build up and a lot more erosion. Then making all these. Yeah, you can actually buy the maps, the big campaign maps. They're 36 inches by 24 inches. You can scale them up to like 6 to 8 feet. Uh, you can get those drive through RPG. We're trying to work on some other shops and stuff to make available to everybody. And also there's an atlas that comes with them that makes it a lot easier to access it by tablets and the maps by tablets or anything else there. Okay, let's come here. Again, we're just focusing on the areas where there's a lot of water, where there's a lot of erosion to make these little guys. Then I'll show you what we're going to do next. And this, this next part's fun. Again, we're just kind of forming a basis of where the erosion is. Forming a basis of where things are going to be. Our next step is one that gets pretty crazy and pretty involved. 
Okay. We've gone ahead and we've pretty made the, we've made the basics of the texture of the land, the high points and low points. What we're going to do now, in case we hate something, is we're actually going to duplicate this layer. And then we're going to hide this layer. That way, if we make any mistakes, we can get back to this and pretty much plug and drop what we need. To start with this, let's go ahead and turn off our reference. To start with this next process, we're going to come to our knife brushes, and we're going to be using the knives and the spatulas quite a bit. We're going to come down to what we call instant blur. And what instant blur does, this is again at full, and it's pretty much an instant blur. It's going to blur out stuff like that. Okay, we don't want it to go so high, so we're going to have to modify it here and there. But this is going to allow us to use the uh, real-time rendering that ArtRage does to show where the high and low points are. We're going to drop our pressure, though, way down. Our pressure of our instant blur is going to be about... Start there. That's not bad. That's a little much. Let's actually lower this to about 150. Size is 150, our pressure is at 9%, our softness is at 90%. And I'm going to come in with my, that instant uh, brush, and I'm going to, if you can see right here, I'm going to just apply it directly to the mountains. And you can see it's breaking up those triangular, triangular forms, and it is merging them together and creating high points and low points, peaks and valleys. I'm just running this on my mountains. And you can see, here's, here's kind of where the craggy mountain is. We go in with our blur. I'm just using my mouths so that the input is 100% all the time. And we've got an instantaneous mountain range. You don't have to worry about any embossing. You don't have to worry about any knowledge of archaic filters or anything like that. Except I really love GIMP filters. But we're actually... Just creating the height, the height and depth of these, just like that. Simple, easy, and I'm just focusing on the mountains and where the hills are. It's kind of why I did a little bit of a different color so I could see everything. Just taking my time going over everything. Here's the difference. Here's this area that we've done. See the mountains actually look like real mountains. Come over here and we get the squares. Then we'll come back up here before we're doing stuff. Again, I'm just running my cursor over every little piece of mountain. I'm not worried about deforming some of those erosion lines. Don't worry about that. We're going to be carving those out later. I'm just running my cursor. Very fluidly, not holding it too tight, keeping a light, light pressure on everything. Just going over where the mountains are. And if I'm grabbing some of the those little valleys, that's cool too. We're actually going to be doing that anyways. But I want to go over the mountains first so they're consistent, a little bit more eroded than some of the other places. We could actually call our eraser our erosion tool. See, we've actually created a spine on the mountains. Really dramatic, really crazy. It's really hard to get excited. Had a little bit of a door slam there, sorry about that. Then we're down in here. All right, let's go ahead and we're now going to do the rest of this. I'm using my stylus now on this. I'm just going to make very simple circles. No pressure at all. Just I'm just running it across where everything is and just where those erosion lines are. I'm, I'm trying to stay out of the middle of them. Just running them very gently up and down those erosion lines like this. and trying to stay out of those middle parts because those are going to be my plains and my forests. Not 
too shabby there, guys. We're doing a really good job. Just getting that done. All right, now let's go ahead and zoom in and look at these. See, we really have a definition of the high points and low points. I am running my mouse across these little guys. It's just a touch where it's really detailed. Now that we've done that comes to our fine and very cool part of this. We're now going to go back to our knife brush. We're going to select our heavy chaos. And we're going to bop this up to about 150. And what we're going to do is we're actually just going to start at the mountains. See that technique I'm doing? We're starting right here at the mountains and then just pulling it down the line. Just barely even touching it. But going from the mountains down into the valleys. And you can already see I'm getting a very realistic texture from that harsh chaos. And I'm starting the middle of my cursor. I'm starting at one edge of the mountains at 150%. Roughly, that's like 500 DPI. And I'm running it down those little, those little erosion lines that we made. And on these finer ones, I'm just, you know, leave them there. Leave your erosion lines there. You don't have to beat them up too much. And again, harsh chaos, running it all the way down into the sea. What that's doing is creating canyons, creating a bunch of other things that are really cool. Like right there, that I just did. Let's have a look at that. Got some canyons. This is our really ro eroded spots. Again, from the mountains down, from the mountains down, from the mountains down. You can I switch, kind of switch it up to blend, but you're going to lose detail if you do that. Some of these parts I want to lose some detail. Like here, we have all these hills and vales and everything like that. Since I'm starting out the mountains going to the sea, it's actually carving out those mountains a little bit. And I'm up here and doing the same thing. Today this will be the final step and then we'll move into the rivers. Get from the top of the mountains in the seas. You can already see what kind of effect we're getting there. Don't worry if you're killing some of that detail. You're really not. That detail is going up when you paint it. It's just going to pop like crazy. And we'll get to that in the next video. If you'd like to, in some of these really detailed areas, you can reduce the size of your harsh chaos. Make sure you adjust the pressure too. You can go in there, go nuts, and create some really spectacular effects. mountains down. If you have planes, you want to go one mountain up, one mountain down, one mountain up. Come back to this. We'll do that smaller brush effect right there here in a second. And you can see the kind of detail we're getting, the kind of texturing we're getting. Start the mountains moving down. Try and be as consistent as possible. You don't have to be neat. Part of Art Rage and the cool thing about Art Rage is that it actually talks to you and flows. And down here where there's no mountains, I'm doing the big spots first, and I'll come back and hit the details here in a second. I'm just hurrying up and getting the rest of this done. Again, same thing down here. Hitting these. Just hitting the rest of these. Gonna come up here and hit these.
And again, everything here is from ArtRage. You don't have to create custom brushes on your own. You can use these settings and get the exact same details. Let's go down here and let's now pop this down to about 75. We're going to follow our little curvy mountains down here. Our little, did you see that? We get almost the same effect, but a lot more detail. This kind of detail is really good for, uh, for like, um, moors and swamps or rainforest areas. This is great for rainforests. This might be a giant swamp right here. I think that's what we're going to do. Again, I'm finding any other thing I don't want as a canyon and just going over it. As I go over these, you can see the detail we're getting. Do one more thing with details and then we're going to say we're good. I want to get, show you guys how to do coastlines. Usually coastlines are really overlooked. But our rage is, we're going to use this harsh chaos brush to really help define those coastlines. Because on our, our next steps for the next video, we're going to be finishing up rivers and actually start painting the landforms. The river, the technique for the river is actually pretty cool. We've been working on and streamlining it for the past couple weeks and we've had really great success with some new techniques and I, I really want to show you those and some canyons over here canyons over here Then we go in and guys, we're doing pretty good. I might want to tweak some stuff. To do coastlines really fun, we're going to go and we're going to up this to about 200. Up our harsh chaos, or chaos, chaos brush. And then we're going to put our fall off. Let me show you what this does. Fall off at 100% will give us images like that. Kind of really smooth. Fall off at 0% is going to give us these really harsh lines. And we kind of want that. So drop here. Drop your fall off, and I'm just going to go around the coastlines here. I'm going to stay about three-fourths of the way off the coastlines. And I'm just going to be coming up here. And you can see, as I follow it around and kind of follow the lines of the world, it is creating some really awesome contours and some really awesome erosion lines. Again, if I'm in a place where it doesn't have much erosion, I won't get these. Like right here where there's going to be that swamp, there's going to be a lot of erosion, and I definitely want to show that. Down here, not so much. You can also cheat. Bust out some areas like that. I don't recommend doing that, but for the sake of this demonstration, it's fine. And over here where there's a lot of water, I'm just going to come in. Desert here, drier area. Up here, same thing. All right, we have our texture done for our map. You can kind of see the really cool lines and real cool images. We've created a really nice background and backing and the base for this. And as I went through my brush, you can see how it just blended really cool with our harsh chaos brush. Again, we can go in on some of these mountains and we can break them up a little bit more just by clicking off to the side of them. We're actually going to finish that right now. Just see. Not too much though, because we really like them. And again, I'm just taking my brush here, going about halfway from them and just clicking once. It's creating this really nice breakup, cuts into it. We do this at the very last to help clean it because we, we kind of want it to flow into all the spots. Again, we're using a custom brush here with zero fallout. Very important that you don't have fallout doing this, otherwise it's going to muddle up everything. But there's one of those finishing techniques that will just make your maps pop. Let's come up here. This will be a good example. See that? I just very click it once. And because I put all that work into the base, 
the base is actually shining through there. Those erosion lines as I clicked in with the harsh chaos with my mouse. See that? Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a really good map going on here. Tomorrow, next time, probably tomorrow, we'll put up a video on how to create rivers, how to create the big tributaries and the branches of those rivers, and continue on to working towards a final product. Um, I'm Dan with Avant Novus. Thank you so much for coming by. We also, just a quick reminder, our maps are on sale at uh, DriveThruRPG. Just go ahead and look in the link below. We're, we're made with ArtRage. We're supported and sponsored by them. We're really glad to do this for you. If you have any questions, email me, avantnovus at gmail.com, or you can leave a message on our Facebook or YouTube videos. Thank you so much for coming by, and I hope you have a great day.